All right, at that point, we go to this section of the projector, the display and lens assembly. In this case, the individual colors are all fed to these LCD displays. This is the blue channel as indicated by the blue dot. This is your green channel as indicated by nothing. And this is your red channel indicated by the red dot. And these displays are roughly one inch diagonal and they are 1280 by 720. And here is the prism. What happens here with the prism, let me put this down, is that the image is combined. You might notice the crisscross pattern here and here. What happens here is that light does not like to travel in sharp angles. If it does, you wind up getting a reflective property, hence how this will work your red channel enters through the prism here and hits this in which case the angle is so great it's reflected out into the lens same difference with the blue except it hits this plane here reflects out to the lens and green since it's not traveling at any angle except directly out just passes directly through and the end result is, if you can, if it's at all visible, yeah, there it is. In the center is white light. However, to aid things along a little more, you might see that there is a thin plastic layer just prior to the prisms. which helps make the light more true to its colors. For example, the blue channel. If I shine the light through the blue channel directly, you will see that it does let out a bluish light. If I go to the red channel, the one puts out a slightly reddish light. And the green one, it may not display too well here, but it does have a slight green tinge to it. Those help the projector further along create the natural colors that will make up your image. The next thing to do to see how it all combines, being that I don't have any electronics to do it, is I've made these little tags. I don't know if they'll show up. It's not cooperating, so I'm going to manually focus in on them. That's not going to let me. Alrighty, we got different lenses here. For the red channel, we got this little thing marked red. For the green channel, it's green. And for blue, blue. I do not know if these are showing up clearly on the video, but they are upside down reading from right to left. This is the angle you want the picture to appear in terms of our demonstration front projection. In the rear projection, you would flip this around so it's left to right but upside down. I'm going to stop the video for the time being so I can put this together. Alrighty, I've put the special labels on each channel, green, blue, and red. I've made a couple mistakes on that. The prism tends to make the image backwards, so blue and red were appearing backwards when I was testing this, so I took the little thumbnails off the tape, reversed them. Now they'll appear in the correct direction. 
in the cases you see where the black line is, in this case green, the word will appear in green and the line will be a negative color, magenta, being that it's a clean pass through blue and a clean pass through red. Same thing with red. It'll be display in red, but the bar will appear as cayenne, whereas blue will appear blue, but the bl bar will appear as yellow. I'm going to put everything together, shine it on this door, since this will be the darkest area I can possibly create, and show you how it all works together. As you can see, this will go here, and the cover will go back on. Now I've got these pieces of mylar tape here, which will help hold everything together, and to keep the lid relatively tight so we don't get so much light leakage. Now it's time to put it all together and make it work. As you can see I've put it all together and it's all taped up to eliminate as much light leakage as possible as well as to keep it all in one piece so it doesn't fall apart. As you can see through the lens the individual colors are showing up. That means all the tags have stuck together and we should have an interesting display on the wall, which will be next. Here it is in its glory. <clears throat> Flashlight propped up to put the most light through the display as humanly possible. Now, gotta remember that this is a short throw projector which had a travel of roughly 18 inches or so. And since the little color tags that I've shown you are further back than the display, you have to keep the image a little smaller so that it shows up relatively clear. As we shut off the light, you can see the red, green, and blue are showing up, what I did not expect due to very poor planning is the red, green, and blue actually appear white. But the bars are working the way as expected. The red one is appearing in opposite form, which would be magenta, I mean cayenne. Magenta would be the green, and yellow is blue. Keep in mind that there's an incandescent source going in, so the colors are slightly skewed more towards the yellow end. Well, I guess I screwed up slightly, but that doesn't matter. The idea of how, how it works, how it's displayed, and as you can see as I pull it back, not only does it get dimmer, and you probably can't see this, but the words go away. However, the frame, like I said, I don't know if it's showing up too well, is clearing up because it was designed for a 40 inch TV. Whereas I put it closer and if the thing will focus in, there we go. You get the color tags showing up. Now I know they're not aligned perfectly, but it wasn't too bad for a blind job that I did. So that's pretty much how your LCD projectors work. I hope you learned something from this. If you did good, if not, oh well. You can also see on the edges why I've gutted this TV because the panels were starting to discolor along the edges, which is a sign that they're frying up and that the display is no good. And that is, your, in a nutshell, the basics of how an LCD projector works. Hope you enjoyed it.